Hello and welcome to the Connotation Points Video Snark. I read books so that you don't have to. I'm continuing my read-through of Vivid by Ashley Busamonti. Not the first video, go check out the others. Links are posted below. Chapter 16. Some time passes, and because the benefactors are incompetent, <coughs> I mean out of leads, the public quickly forgets about Elm's attack at the library and people move on with their lives. Ava has doubled down on her effort to avoid Blake, determined to burn that bridge, which is funny considering that it's exactly what Celine wanted, yet if she knew what Ava was actually doing, she'd probably have an aneurysm. Meanwhile, Ava has been going to um every single day now. One morning, she catches him seemingly just as he's rolled out of bed and finds him adorable. She sees his gardening tools lying around and tries to ask about them, but he quickly changes the topic. And we've gotten to the point where every time he tries to change the topic, I wonder what else he's hiding. Ava lets him do this and says that she needs to up her yellow magic training and asks him to train her in how to defend against yellow magic. Elm um, doesn't like this since it would mean actually fighting her, but she does have a fair point. People in the series scream about yellow magic, yet they refuse to talk about it. How are people supposed to protect themselves if they don't even know the first thing about it? We are in the clearing where he first took me to show me the horses. It looks so empty and open with the herd's absence, although traces of them remain everywhere. Hoof prints in the dust, a stray wisp from a mane. The poop. What? Somebody had to say it. Ava convinces him and they go outside to practice. He makes a tiger appear, although Ava knows that it's him because there aren't tigers in Magnus. But the tiger attacks her and although she keeps telling herself that her body is physically unharmed, Elm um, inside of her mind tells her that it does hurt. She uses her powers to get away from the tiger and tells him that this feels more like a game. He makes a tiger disappear and throws a dagger down at her feet, tells her to pick it up and attack him. Naturally, Eva objects to this, but Elm controls her body to pick up the dagger and point it at her chest as a show that he can control her body through her mind. He says that he could end her right here, right now, but he's not that kind of a person. He releases his hold on her and hugs her while he apologizes over what he did. She had told him not to hold back and he was only following her instructions, and he wanted to show her that this isn't a game. He then reveals that they never actually left the cave at all. He walks her all the way to the school gates, insistent that she remain unharmed. He asks that tomorrow is her birthday and asks if she'll come to him after her classes tomorrow. She agrees. He then leans forward like he's going to kiss her, but pulls back, which leaves Ava full of disappointment. Chapter 17 Ava has been looking forward to whatever Elm has planned to celebrate her birthday, especially since she usually doesn't do anything. Or should I say that Mother Gothel, <clears throat> Celine, doesn't find the need to celebrate anything since that would clearly take away from studying. However, Ava is upset to learn that the locket has finally run out of power and no longer turns her invisible. She is not to be deterred, however, and decides to just go into the forest under the pretext of studying. There are still benefactors out there, but since the incident at the city library, their efforts have been redirected there. She continues on it and is about ready to step into the fake hole when Blake randomly stops her. Why he'd been following her for a while without saying anything is beyond me. But I also read a lot of romance novels where the man stalks and harasses the main character, so maybe that's just rubbing off on me right now. Although, I swear to a higher power, Ashley, if you turn Blake into the angry insult character, you and I are going to have words. Eva insists that she was going to jump into the hole after a squirrel, but quickly confronts her foster brother over why he was following her without saying a word. He says that he had wanted to wish her a happy birthday, but she took off so quickly, and then he was curious as to what she was doing in the forest to begin with. He goes on and says that he's worried about her, that Ava seems different recently. Ava gives the excuse of how birthdays make her reflect on everything she's lost in her life and that almost seems to do the trick with Blake. However, there's still the matter of how Blake followed her almost to Elm's cave. He could go back and report everything to the first benefactor he comes across. Right on cue, vague, scary shapes appear from the woods. Ava knows that this is likely the result of Elm's magic, so she stands there and watches as Blake turns from hero to running away as fast as he can. Elm appears and tells Ava that he'll chase Blake in the direction of the school and then wipe his memory. When Ava says that he didn't have to scare Blake, Elm replies by saying that he did it because he doesn't like Blake. He then asks why she's not invisible and he quickly refills the locket with power once she explains to him. Ava feels relief once she's in the dress again. Elm then blindfolds her before he leads her into the cave. Once there, he picks her up and puts her onto a boat. He feeds her some cake and she's surprised that it's actually lemon cake. He tells her that there's a lemon tree in the cave and that it's been there for a while now, and he kind of used somebody else's oven to bake in. Ava doesn't care because it's delicious, so morals are okay to go out the window with delicious baked goods. 
He then blindfolds her again and they continue on the boat. He leads her on to land again and pulls a blindfold off to show that he's planted an entire field of sunflowers. He goes on to tell her that he tracked down the sunflower seed plant, which isn't all that far if he has access to a car, but the real problem was keeping the wildlife away from the flowers. He put yellow gems around the area to tell people to get lost but kept having to go back to recharge them. Eva kisses him on the cheek and says that this is the best gift she's ever had. They sit down in among the flowers and Eva says that she's glad she met him because she likes him a lot. Elm teases her a bit before confessing that he adores her. As night falls, he starts to walk her back towards the school. However, as they go, they hear voices. Elm isn't afraid until he hears multiple people and then he suddenly changes his tune. Eva continues to not be that worried so long as her invisibility holds. After Elm leaves, Eva goes forward as silently as she can to try and find out more. She sees Selene and Jace, the latter who was trying to insist that he came into the forest because he thought he saw something. However, Selene instead wants him not to put a toe out of line and makes vague threats that, that seem to have some kind of an impact on Jace. He insists that he's loyal to the benefactors. As they turn to leave, with Celine complaining about how creepy the forest is, Ava realizes that if they get to the school ahead of her, they'll lock her out of the campus overnight, so she's forced to race ahead. As she goes, she thinks that if Celine thinks Jace is suspicious, then Ava should keep an eye on him too. Chapter 18 Sometime later, Ava is trying to study in the library, but she's only just thinking of her quickly approaching graduation. She spent most of her life in preparation to become a benefactor, but after having met Alm, she's questioning everything. If she even wants that, if the benefactors aren't doing more harm than good. Selene and Jace come into the library and Ava tells the readers that Jace gives her the creeps. Selene asks Ava to come to her office and Ava's guard is instantly up. Ava follows Selene and Jace into the office where Selene makes Ava watch a video. In it, a woman confesses that a yellow used his magic on her to make her think that they were dating, and then he used her to get info about the benefactors. This went on for 12 years, and I legit can't believe that Celine and I are of the same opinion about this. Celine stops the interview when Ava says enough and asks Ava if she has it in her to destroy yellow. Ava thinks about the data sphere she'd watched about Matthew and Olivia using electrical wires to destroy them, and agrees that she could if necessary. Celine. Then gives Ava a form to fill out, implying that Ava has already been accepted into the Benefactor training program despite not having graduated. Selene goes on and says that they need people like Ava, but they want to make sure that she's ready since the mentalist is still running around. And Ava has a really long moment in which she's positive Elm wouldn't use her like that. Would he? No, he's not like that. But what if, which is what I've been saying this entire time, it's likely he's using her for some kind of a long game. The lady in the video ha said that she'd been used for 12 years. A few months is nothing. Ava goes to the cave, although she's still having her doubts. Elm asks why she isn't in class and chides her for putting her future in jeopardy. But those seeds have been planted and Ava now wonders why he's so keen on her becoming a benefactor. He takes her deeper into the cave than he's taken her before and shows her a cavern full of multicolored fluorite that favors yellow. He confesses he tried to dig it out but he didn't really know how and almost collapsed the cave. But he did manage to chip some of the yellow gems out which is why he has so many yellow gems. Ava asks to try out some of the red gems and the two of them mess around with their different magic for a moment. Ava then asks if yellow can control dreams. He says that they can slip into people's dreams, but when you're in a dream, the sleeper is the one who is mostly in control. They don't usually do it because it can be dangerous. He tries to change the topic, but Eva isn't having any of that, not when Celine planted those seeds of doubt earlier. She accuses him of having gone after her in her dreams to make her obsessed with him. Elman says that he doesn't know what she's talking about, but it's too late for Eva. Celine's poison has already taken root. She runs for the cave and goes back to the school. In her room, she shoves the locket into a drawer before she starts to cry over how stupid she's been, but she quickly stops her tears and tells herself not to fall into an oubliette self-pity. She then goes to Celine's office and confesses about how she thinks she's been tricked by Elm. Celine says that she felt like something like that was happening, but is quick to assure her that none of this is her fault, that Ava can still become a benefactor. If anything, this just proves how strong she is if she was able to recognize the signs and come to Celine for help. She then asks where Elm's hideout is, but Ava lies and says that she'd come back to herself in front of the school gates with no memory of where she'd been. She begs her some way to help keep Elm out from her mind in the future. However, Celine's only solution is to take Ava's powers away since you can only do magic on another magic person. Which, uh, danger real Robinson, especially when Celine goes on and says that they're going to remove other people's powers too, for protection. 
If that goes along with this, with literally zero questions, the entire scene of her putting her powers into the clear stone reminds me a lot of Ariel singing her voice away to Ursula, especially the part where Celine insists on hanging on to it for safekeeping. Celine goes on and says that Eva won't officially finish out the school year and only just wants Eva to take a couple of weeks to recover. After this, they'll restore her power and she'll begin her training. This also doesn't raise any alarms in Eva either. Celine says that Eva shouldn't leave the campus because Elma's still out there and could come after her in other ways. She also warns not to tell about this to anybody, although Eva scoffs over that one. She literally had two friends. One she just read it out, the other she pushed away because of Celine's poisonous words. Eva goes back to her room where she mopes about the entire situation a little bit. She has a dream where she wants to go to Elma to feel the sunflowers but finds she can't, both emotionally and physically. She wakes up and she's angry that he's still in her mind even after having given up her powers. But as she walks around to keep herself busy, she tells herself that she'll be the last person he hurts. Thanks for listening to my chapter by chapter review of Vivid. I'm going to post a new video every day until I run out of chapters. Once I finish with Vivid, I promise to get back to the regular Monday update schedule and resume Fury. Just as a reminder, even if you can't financially support me, there are other ways to help me out. The first is watching this video as well as all my other videos. It's also important to like and subscribe. Finally, you can share this video with all of your friends so that they can help as well. If you're already caught up with all of my videos, you can go to Tumblr for my main books. Narks always free and updated every morning. And if you've already read all of my main snarks, you can find even more snark on my Patreon. You can access it for $1 a month. Members also get early access to my main Tumblr snark. Special thanks to Dawn, Phoebe, and Nikki for supporting me on Patreon already. If you want to hear your name in my video next week, either support me on Patreon or make a one-time donation. Do you like my snark so much that you want me to snark your writing? I do that too. For just $6 per chapter, I will tell you how awful that your writing is. But not to worry if you feel like you couldn't take the criticism. I also offer regular book editing as well, just one cent per word. You can contact me on any of my social media platforms if you have further questions. If you want to read some of the things that I fear and you can purchase my works on Amazon, I have a slew of erotic short stories and now two full-length novels. I also sometimes run flash sales on my stories and if you don't follow me on any social media, you might want to do that just so you can know when I might be offering more things for free. Links for everything will be posted below. See you tomorrow, guys! Orange shows here a cavern full of multicolored fluoride that flit.